Hi, welcome to the Film Prop Channel. Today I'm going to tell you about a 1986 action movie called, Armor of God. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and support me with a like. That way the channel will grow. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. While the natives are arranging a ritual in a dilapidated temple, our hero Jackie, known as the Asian Hawk, tries to sneak in and take the ritual sword, but accidentally grabs the head of the statue and is spotted. The natives run at him with the whole horde, throwing spears, but Jackie deftly dodges each one. The chase moves on to the mountain, from which Jackie rolls down. They land on planks and roll after him. Jackie gets on the plane and flies away from there. The men in the balaclava investigate what happened, trying to figure out why that sword is Jackie's. They watch the TV footage of Jackie still young and singing in a band. It turns out that the sword Jackie stole is one of the three elements of the god's armor, and the man fears that if he got the sword so easily, he will get the other two elements as well. It was decided to steal Laura, a friend of Jackie's with whom he was once in a group, but he still cares for her. And so, the men in the black robe run into the building during the concert and shoot the guards until they finally get to Laura and take her with them. Meanwhile, Jackie tries to sell the sacred sword at auction. A rich girl buys it for 400,000, and Jackie offers to give her a ride home, but she refuses because of the wind and goes to her car. Jackie returns to the hotel and gets a bunch of messages from Laura's lover, in the last one he says he's waiting for him in the lobby, which is where Jackie goes. Alan tells everything about what happened to Laura and begs Jackie to help. Our hero feels that Alan is taking advantage of his feelings for Laura, for he has suffered greatly from the fact that they cannot be together. But after Alan's touching speech about how he still considers Jackie his friend, our hero agrees to help him. They need to collect all the elements of the god's armor and trade them for Laura. Jackie sold one armor a couple of hours ago, and the Count has the rest. They decide to stop by the Count's mansion, but run into guards with dogs until a man drives them straight to the mansion. Jackie and Alan ask to borrow elements of the god's armor, but the Count replies only that he has no reason to trust strangers, moreover, for the sake of one girl's life. Alan rubs in the Count's trust and goes to the god's armor on the pretext of showing a collection of antiques, finding out along the way that there are no guards in the house except for dogs and a leopard. The Count tells them the story of the God's armor. Before Christ was born, evil was rampant. The true God, who stood for justice, waged holy war against the forces of evil and won. His weapons decided to call them the armor of a God. People began to form cults that sought out and destroyed the God's armor, believing that once destroyed, the teachings of the true God would perish and they would rule the world. Jackie says that the story is a bit illogical, to which the Count replies that religion and faith are not always logical. After the story, the Count says it's too late, and he wasn't ready for their visit. He asks Jackie and Alan to stay with him for a few days. Jackie immediately begins to refuse, and Alan quickly figures out that he needs to stay and try to steal the god's armor. Jackie had no idea about Alan's plan the whole time, but when Alan orders a bunch of meat to the room, he tells him it's meat for leopards and dogs and Jackie finally gets the idea. He's adamantly against stealing, but he's just as worried about Laura. They sulk with Alan and Jackie drifts off to sleep. He has a nightmare of a car following him while Alan and Laura cuddle and stare at him. But he is awakened by an employee of the mansion, and he says the Count is calling him. Jackie goes into the room and sees that Alan tried to pull off his plan, but he was caught and the police were called. Later, they are joined by an auction hottie, May, who bought the sword. She is the Count's daughter. The police are about to enter the mansion and Jackie decides to save his friend by offering the Count a deal. He will borrow three pieces of armor from him to free Laura, and he will take the remaining two from the kidnapper and bring them to the Count. The man agrees to such a deal, and the beautiful May joins their team. They set off on their journey. May insists on joining them during the operation itself, but Jackie can't take that risk and refuses. In the morning, they leave for the deal. Alan must go alone while Jackie watches him. May takes out her rifle and goes to the roof to cover them from above. A man approaches Alan and shows him a picture of Laura. The cult men attack Alan, but Jackie intervenes in the fight and fights them while May shoots at them from the roof. The cult members run away, but our hero doesn't want to leave it that way and runs after them to interrogate them. They lead them to the rest of the cult members and a chase begins for Jackie and Alan. They get in the car and try to get away from the crazy occultists. But how do they get May, who is left on the roof? Jackie turns on the turbo on his car and straightens out the motorcyclists by throwing them off the market, and drives to a ramp between two bridges, after which only one car follows him. They arrive at the bridge, and this car is about to throw them off the bridge. It goes straight at Jackie's car, but he has a trick for that as well. Out of the trunk of the car comes a little go-kart with Jackie and Alan sitting in it. 
They drive off in it and that car crashes into Jackie's car and explodes. They find May and go to a restaurant to have a beer. Jackie and Alan pay the waiter to find out something about the cult members. The waiter knows next to nothing, except that they come to their place and order groceries and then take the girls with them. Jackie and Alan beat up the two members and change into their uniforms, May changing into the clothes of one of the prostitutes. As they drive to their base, Jackie kisses May for believability. Upon arrival, Jackie and Alan cover themselves with hoods so no one will notice them. At the ceremony, the cult leader says that more than 3,000 followers have joined them in a month. One occultist says the Maquis have produced 3,600 kilograms of opium. That's how the cult. The occultists quickly recognize Jackie and Alan and report it to the chief. They go looking for Laura, who has been injected with some kind of serum that allows her to control people. Laura is ordered to go with Alan and get three pieces of god armor, and another to inject Asian Hawk with the same serum to keep him loyal to them. Laura obeys the order. Meanwhile, May is molested by the ringleader's assistant, but almost immediately guesses that she is of noble blood. Another cult member comes to the man and tells him that May is a spy. He does not immediately react to this and feigns drunkenness, falling into bed with the keys. May takes the keys and changes into her clothes while the man watches her with covered eyes. Jackie and Alan knock out the one occultist who has been following them and find out where Laura is. May sneaks up on them and joins the team. They find Laura, who is not talking at all, acting as if she is in a dream. The friends disguise Laura as a prostitute and put her in the car. The cult members let them leave. They return to the hotel, and Laura kisses Jackie on the cheek before going to bed. Our hero is left alone with May, but he does not kiss the girl, and after a bad joke, he gets a slap in the face. Laura asks Alan in the middle of the night to show her the armor of a god. Alan finds this strange, so he goes to Jackie's house to discuss Laura's behavior. Jackie says that she has always been nosy and Alan really needs to show her the armor. But the armor is kept in May's room. Jackie and Alan go to her room while May is off somewhere. But she comes back a few minutes later and Jackie has to cleverly talk May up and then he calls her into his room, but Laura turns up in it. She's almost out of her clothes and gets to Jackie, acting completely insane. It seems that Jackie himself is beginning to notice something amiss. Alan comes into his room and almost sees Laura, but Jackie leads him out of the room, telling him that it is May in his bathroom. Alan believes him, but then begins to have doubts and goes into Jackie's room. He is greeted by Laura with a syringe in her hand and stabs Alan with it. In the morning, Jackie notices that they have stolen the god's armor. Together with May, they have to get them back. Jackie rides his motorcycle up a mountain, but even his motorcycle can't climb a mountain that high and he has to walk. He ties himself to rocks and descends the mountain into a cave above the occultist's temple. The cave is full of bats and sharp rocks, among which Jackie makes his way to save his friends and possibly the world. Along the way, he accidentally angers the dogs, and deftly climbs to the top. Thus, he finds the room where Laura and Alan are sitting. He goes to them, but it turns out that he only wanted to save Laura. He is not omnipotent, and what good would it do him to save Alan? But Alan starts a sugar-coated speech in his usual manner, and Laura begs Jackie to save him, too. As they walk through the caves, Alan decides to jump into some hole and ends up right in the middle of the banquet table. The occultists grab him, about to return him to the dungeon, but Jackie dips a wooden pole in wine and sets it on fire. He covers them with a pillar of fire to make them escape, but it doesn't last long and things turn to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Jackie is left alone among a crowd of crazy occultists who are good at kung fu. He uses whatever he can get his hands on, throwing mugs and plates as usual, but comes out victorious until backup arrives. Finally, Jackie gets to the room where all the god's armor is sharpened and tries to retrieve it, but doesn't notice someone running by him. The lights come on and the curtains come down. He is attacked by crazy women with impeccable kung fu skills. They pierce all over Jackie with their heels. Jackie can't hit the women and defends himself by trying to slowly fight off the crazy women drugged with the same serum as Laura. When Jackie realizes that these are just live robots following orders, he decides to fight them after all and deals with the villains in his own deft way. But that's not all. A mob of armed men runs out to Jackie, but Jackie has something in store for him. His whole body is wrapped in dynamite and he lights a fuse to show he's not bluffing. Of course, he puts it out, and the cult leader decides again that Jackie is bluffing. Then Jackie lights it all on fire again and accidentally sticks his body. In fright, he starts throwing explosives and blows up the whole cave, which begins to collapse. Everyone runs away, including Jackie. He runs outside and stands right on the cliff face. Our hero ignites yellow smoke, which is seen by Alan, May, and Laura, who are flying in a hot air balloon. The cliff begins to collapse, 
as does the cave, and Jackie decides to do the dangerous thing of jumping off the mountain with the yellow smoke in his hand. He flies straight into the balloon and lands on top, slowly making his way down to his team. They give him a hand and Jackie climbs into the balloon. And the hell with the god's armor, no one gets it anymore. The important thing is that everyone is alive and the villains are punished.